Today is a special edition of the 900 series. It's race day, which is why we're at a different time. So we're dedicating this show for all of you who like to take your cars on the track. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this special edition. I'm Tony Mazzagatti, owner of 900 series motorsports. Porsche says that 70% of all Porsches ever made are still on the road today. Our mission is to keep it that way. This is the 900 series. I have a red 993 convertible here. Uh, I believe it's a 1994 uh, automatic transmission. Uh, the customer provided a fab speed exhaust system. So basically, uh, we're just going to be removing the mufflers. It's not a full cat back exhaust system. So the, just the left and right mufflers will be removed. And we will put on these really pretty exhaust mufflers on. Fabspeed makes a great product. They are definitely the top dollar exhaust system you want to have. So when I go to pull the old ones off, you'll see all the corrosion and how much weight you'll save with the new ones. So they provided us uh, the hangers and we'll just reuse the, uh, the clamps for the exhaust tips. Pretty simple job, we're just gonna remove um, basically three bolts on this one side here and then same thing with the other. Hey Ramon, I'm, I'm going over to Kent's. I'll be back around lunchtime. I'm going to sneak out and visit Kent Moore over at Premier Sports Car Service. You're going to love the cars that we're going to see over there. Kent has all, every kind of race car competition Porsche that you can think of uh, from even a Carrera GT to uh, IMSA, GT race cars, GT4s, uh, a lot of really interesting full professional race cars. Kent was a uh, crew chief uh, and a member of the team for Porsche Cars of North America at Le Mans and Daytona. He won Le Mans twice and Daytona also. Kent's shop now caters to uh, mostly track cars and GT cars and a lot of pro-am racers. I wanted to find out how Kent made the transition from professional race teams to his current shop. Well, back when we were running the factory, factory and um, non-factory cars in the ALMS, we were tight-knit with Porsche at the time doing some R&D with them and figuring out what things worked and what didn't really work on the cars and then kind of making things in the future that could work for more endurance type stuff and then it would in turn kind of be put to the street car division so I always kind of loved that portion of it and I kind of got tired of being on the road all the time and wanted to get more into developing things and getting things on products that would show that you know the cars are even better than what they came from just as a street car mm -hmm. so I, I kind of left racing and started doing some development on our own with uh, pro drivers on the side with uh, various cars from GT based cars to Carreras to Boxsters to Caymans and we just kind of build and enhance the cars around the owners uh, driving needs. And I wanted to know what his opinion is of taking a street car modifying it for the track and whether those modifications are irreversible or if you've destroyed your street car. I think that comes down to the owner's commitment to what he wants to do. So that would be a conversation to hear out because with the way Porsche has done their, their cars these days, if you want to go full-blown racing, well, they have a full-blown race car that you can just go buy and it's going to be turnkey. Yeah. You don't need these home-build cars that are breaking every 20 minutes that are out of the tracks. And they have different levels of it. They have full-blown factory driver status cars, and then they, they tear down to club-level cars. So if they want to commit to a full-blown race car that's not registrable, they're out there. It's a lot less risk than tearing up a street car. But that being said, if you don't have the budget for that or you don't have the desire to own a race car, there's things that you can do to a street car to enhance performance of it, whether it's braking or um, more power through corner exits or, mm -hmm. you know, high speed. There's aero packages you can do. There's a lot of things you can do. I just always tell people if it's not reversible, don't do it because you just killed the value of your car.
Coming up after the break. Let's stop right here. This, this car is really impressive. If you're looking to put some aftermarket parts in your car, uh, first great step is an exhaust system. Uh, before I get started, I'm gonna soak these down with some rust off because these bolts are a little rusty and I, I really don't wanna have to cut anything off today. So the stuff I'm spraying on will just hopefully seep through and soak through the nut and bolt to try to help loosen up the corrosion. So I'm gonna start off by removing the exhaust tips. They usually just like to match up, make sure everything's gonna fit right. Uh, with the new fab speed exhaust system, he's definitely gonna save some weight and the sound, he's gonna have a deeper tone. Um, so at the higher RPMs, he's definitely gonna feel a difference uh, in acceleration. And uh, it's definitely just a much cleaner look and will sound a lot throatier. Uh, we will use the ex old exhaust tips for now, but that's not gonna make a uh, difference in performance. Uh, I believe he's still searching for other exhaust tips to put on there. This one, I say about 10, 15 pounds. This one's a good, yeah, 20, 25 pounds. So at least 10 pounds on each muffler, which is pretty big difference. And with this car being almost 30 years old, you feel a lot of corrosion, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these exhaust tips, make them look nice and pretty. And when we get back, we'll put it all back together. So I took some time cleaning up these uh, stock tips on this 993, just to complement the chrome on the five speed exhaust. So I wanted to find out from Ken, if you wanted to get into professional racing, what's the process that you would go through? It's guys like us and the guys that are currently in motorsport. They have all the connections to, uh, or access to all the pro guy, the pro drivers, the, the engineers, the data guys, and they just put together a, a, a configuration that works as a team. And an amateur guy like this gentleman comes in and says, okay, well, I'd like to do this. How does it work? Well, you get the car, you commit to a series, and then you gather up your resources to build a team, and it, it now becomes a, an equal involvement thing where you have an amateur working with pro-level guys. Mm -hmm. So that's what that... It's quite a commitment. Yeah, it is. And not cheap. No, and expectations are high with yep. some of the, the teams. They, they don't want to go out there and just lose, but... Yep. Um, you can't always win, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, I, I, when I talk about racing, I don't have to win, but I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so there's a fine line there between, between that. So we had fun visiting, but I wanted you to see some of the cars that he's got in the shop. So I asked Kent for a sneak peek. Let's stop right here. This, this car is really impressive. This is a street car, unlike most of your, your race cars that you have around here. So what, what, you, you told me there was an engine fire. What happened to this car initially? They were driving it down the road on a test drive. It was listed for sale at, a, at the dealer. And I guess a bag went underneath the car, mm. hit the exhaust and it stuck to it and it burned up the backside of the car and it caused a lot of damage back there. Took off all the paint, liquefied all the texture to the car. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we ended up stripping the car all back down with the motor out the front of it. He decided to go with bigger brakes to the car. And then we decided, well, if it is a unique car, maybe we should do kind of like a 935 type car, um, but fully streetable. It could still pass smog if it was required to. He's having fun building it. It's unique to him and- It's unique I, to look at. I, I mean, enjoy doing yeah. it. So. <laughs> Sometimes if you find a damaged Porsche or one that just needs some, some work, that's the perfect time to do some really spectacular upgrades. 
All right, so the next, the next car you've got on a lift over here is, uh, this is an interesting GT3 RS, and if you like green, this is your car. I like, I like the way the, the underneath the pan, they're all smooth for aerodynamics. They're pretty flat, yes. Yeah, flat, whole flat bottom, and a, and a diffuser that comes from the factory. That particular diffuser was introduced on the 911R um, a couple of years ago, and they put it on there due to the loss of the wing on the 911R, they had to keep the back of the car down, mm -hmm. and the diffuser was, is what helped that. Um, and, and the diffuser works like an upside down yeah. airplane wing. Mm -hmm. It actually sucks because the lower air pressure underneath sucks the car down to yep. the ground. Negative pressure, which yeah. is Which is what the wing was doing mm -hmm. before. Uh, is, there, is there less drag in having a diffuser as opposed to a big wing on it? Yeah, I'd say so. Because you're, you're always balancing drag against lift. It's, that's a big wing. Yeah. I, I bet that thing puts down at least 350 to 400 pounds wow. of downforce yeah. at speed. That's very cool. How many liters was the first 911 engine? I always enjoy going into Kent's shop because there are different cars all the time and some very rare and competition cars that you don't see every day. Let's, uh, let's go over to this car. This is interesting. All right, this, this is an interesting car. This is a GT4, but this, it's a little more than just your everyday GT4 also. Right. This is the new spec class that came out back in 2016. They opened up a professional series for GT4 cars, which were the mid-engine Caymans. Mm -hmm. um, it was supposed to be an introduction class at a price-friendly level and get people into competition that's wheel-to-wheel -wheel and it's spec, so everything's mm -hmm. sealed from the factory and you just have to run it um, like it is. So you're really racing against the other driver rather than yeah, that's, strange specs that's on the car. That's kind of why I like this, yeah. this concept is because it really is driver for driver at that point. Mm -hmm. They're all equal cars. Yeah. So I think that's the fun part of developing a driver. And that's why coaches are getting very popular these days is because of things like this. Yeah. This particular car had the string alignment tool already attached to it. And what that does is it allows you to do alignments at the track or wherever on the spot just as you need them. That sounds like a fun car to, to run on the track. Let's, uh, this, is, this one's pretty serious up here. Let's take a look at this one. This one looks like a real serious racer. What, what's this one been running in? I guess? This would be a, a retired factory race car that mm. used to race in the American Le Mans series back in the day. Yeah. This was a 2002 GT3 RS. Based on the 996. Based on the 996, yeah. It was the wide body, lightweight version. It was a very popular model back then. It was really a manufacturer's first true entry to bring a lot more customer teams in and running a lot of production-based cars. Mm -hmm. So this was, you know, the start of a, of a big motorsport following for Porsche, so. And this isn't a car you just turn the key and start. No, it's, this one definitely requires, you know, someone that knows the car in and out. Um, these were the cars that got a lot of development back in the day. I don't know, it's, it's very raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, this, this car is, is really interesting. We can talk about this thing for the, for the rest of the day, but uh, uh, you're, you're starting to get my juices going. Um, do you think I'd get a couple minutes in your uh, simulator over yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's go see what that is, because that's a, that's a really nice simulator. So I got these cleaned up. As you can see, they're, I tried putting some polish on there. Uh, they're just not going to shine like I thought they would. Um, so I'm going to recommend getting some new tips. So the great thing about this fast speed exhaust system is that they're modular. So you can go ahead and reuse the stock uh, tips on it, or you can go ahead and put the ones provided by fast speed. Uh, we'll go ahead and get these mufflers on. and. Uh, Let's see how this thing sounds. So basically this hanger here will bite onto the bracket that's on the, the car and then the clamp is what ties it down. Uh, 
Oh yeah, this is gonna make it a lot easier. What this one? I'm not gonna tighten up the uh, exhaust tip all the way. When I get the other side on, I usually like to uh, measure it out and give a look where, so it looks nice and even. So we'll just leave it hang, hanging there for now. So we got the left and right mufflers on. Now I'm just gonna make some adjustments to the tips. Just make sure they're nice and square with each other. Anytime you upgrade a Porsche, you want the detail to be just right. Today's spotlight takes us to the Midwest, to the Porsche Club of America, Chicago region. The Chicago region supports local nonprofits whose mission is to help the children of Chicagoland. Their charity of choice is Automotive Mentoring Group. The Automotive Mentoring Group is a nonprofit organization that teaches young women and men the art of automobile restoration to build confidence, dedication, and generate focus. Younger participants in the program start out working on model cars, bicycles, and refrigerators before moving on to vehicles. These projects teach character and the satisfaction that comes only with the application of acquired skills. To combat juvenile gang participation and violence, the Automotive Mentoring Group recruits gang members to restore old cars, and in the 24 years, the organization has mentored over 300 young people. To learn how you can join the Chicago region to support this worthy cause, follow the link on our website at the900series.com. This ought to be interesting. This is uh, this is your simulator. And this is where you teach real people how to get some experience on the track. So it looks like we're set up for Lime Rock. After seeing all these great race cars, it really got my juices flowing again. So I asked Kent if I can get on the simulator for a while. Oh, geez, this thing slowed and spun. This, this is as realistic as it as it gets, I'll tell you. Kent's simulator is a very sophisticated one with motion control with the seat, and you can change the tracks, you can change different cars on the tracks, and different weather and track conditions. Whoa, a little wheel spin. Keep it off the wall. And using the simulator is a great way to learn the landmarks of a particular track before you even get there. Whoa, this thing does spin. This is, this is pretty real. Yeah, it's pretty realistic. And of course, the thing that I like best about a simulator is the reset button. Of course, I would never hit the wall or spin out but it's useful to have the reset button. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little feel for it now. I think I've proven my point. It yes. does help. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you can see you can get, uh, you get smoother and, and better, but maybe not that good. That's not part of the track, Tony. Oh, it isn't? No. Oh, OK. Usually pavement's not green. This is always a treat coming over here. Right? You're welcome, anytime. I gotta get better on the simulator. Yes, don't I'm be a stranger. A, I'm not a simulator kind of guy, so that'll be that'll be fun to come back and uh, hone my skills. It'll be good we'll for you. I need it. <laughs> I wanna give a huge thanks to Kent Moore from Premier Sports Car Service for letting us tour his shop. And I'm thinking about that simulator. I think I may need one more lap. Let's fire this up. Let's see how it sounds. That's pretty good. All right, so now that we uh, got the new 
Mufflers installed. I'm checking for exhaust leaks. Yeah, it sounds pretty good at idle. So we got the new Fab Speed exhaust installed. Had an idling, checking for exhaust leaks. Everything looks great. So we're gonna close it up and uh, take it for a test drive. All right, so after doing a job like this, usually I'm just listening for rattles or taking noise to make sure there's no exhaust leaks. So we recorded the car uh, before we did the modifications. And we also recorded the car after we did the modifications. Uh, this sound sounds so much better, the customer's gonna love it. This exhaust system, it looks good, it sounds great, and they're gonna see a much better performance out of the car. Where's Tony yet? I have no idea. Oh, shoot. Hey, man, you still here? Uh, yeah, just a few more laps. All right, I'll, I'll do my homework. Don't worry. Just lock down. Now a few more laps. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing? I think Eugene screwed up the car.